Coming up right here on Weather Underground, as we head into the weekend, we're watching for another coast-to-coast -coast storm to take shape. We're going to show you where it's the edition of Weather Underground. I'm Mike Bettis. I'm Alex Wilson. A lot going on this weekend. We got like Mardi Gras happening. We do. Um, what else do we have? We have some big sporting events. Daytona 500 is this mm -hmm. weekend. Tiger Woods is going to play in California. He is, yeah. Um, we've got outside hockey. There's all kinds of stuff happening yeah. outside. I'm going to sit on my couch. That's <laughs> Indoors, what I do. You need an outdoor patio with the TV. Hey, that's not a bad Tell idea. the hubby. Yeah, that's a... That's Say, we need a new patio. We're going to need an outside TV because I'm not going outside to <laughs> Listen, not watch TV. You will not hear a man argue that you need that's another true. TV in that's your home. True. So this is brilliant. Actually, that's one thing. That, yes, <laughs> we can always get them to okay. Hey, uh, we've got a lot to recap <laughs> way moving forward. And again, could we get some more opportunities for wintry weather here? We're what, halfway through? More than halfway through the month of February and we're still waiting on some good snow in our northeastern cities. Right now, we've got 61 in New New York with a lot of that rain moving through. Uh, we've got a few showers around the New York City area, but some of the steadier stuff currently off the coast. Bangor, Maine, you've got wintry mix, so some freezing rain showing up there. We've got fog and 14 degrees in Caribou, so watch for some of that freezing fog. Burlington's at 20, 23 in Buffalo, 26 in Cleveland, all getting in on light snow showers. D.C., some light rain coming down with temps in the low to mid 50s. How about a closer look at Burlington 20, Albany's 41. So yeah, you can spot the front. Boston's at 58. We've got that cooler air already settling into interior parts of the Northeast. But again, coming at a cost, some of these areas have actually seen some of the ice. Messina, a third of an inch of ice accumulation. So that's making things really rough out there on the roads. Millinocket, uh, just over a tenth of an inch of ice. And other areas across the western New York picking up at least a mini amount of ice there in Sanborn, uh, very close to Buffalo and uh, just near Niagara Falls, four hundredths of an inch. So again, not a lot, but again, you catch that uh, with your foot, with a tire, you can have some issues. Winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories remain in effect for portions of New York, Vermont, New New Hampshire and Maine here as we move through the evening hours. And again, not expecting much in the way of snow. A little bit more in the way of the freezing rain could continue for places like Bangor with down east Maine, the coastal spots getting in on about an inch of snow. Philly, you've got rain. D.C., rain. Again, New York City, a few showers working into your area. In Boston, we're watching those showers in the middle parts of Massachusetts. It'll be headed your way. But Albany, you've got some snow off to the west. And we've seen some of that snow falling in parts of west central Pennsylvania. So along I-8 could get some bursts of snow. Closer look at the cold front, how it works through later today. Again, rain begins to wrap up. We'll still be watching for some snow showers, some lake enhancement coming off of Lake Ontario there from the North Country into the Finger Lakes region. And then we've got some areas in the uh, areas of Southwest New York, closer to Jamestown and then the Appalachians through West Virginia, Western North Carolina and Eastern Tennessee picking up some snow showers. Boston, look how those temperatures drop off as we move into the afternoon hours, upper 40s by 5 o'clock. How about mid 30s by 8? So if you're heading out this evening for Friday night plans, be prepared for much colder temps headed your way. Mike, weekend weather headed our way for some of our events. Starting our engines, we got the Daytona 500 in Daytona Beach, Florida. It's on Sunday, race start at 2.30. And boy, does it get better than this? Mid 70s, mix of sun and clouds. So you got the sunglasses on or the ball cap, but you know, you're not needing all that. You get a little shade from the clouds. And again, temperatures will remain comfortable. It's dry throughout the race, looking great. Then we've got the Genesis Invitational in Pacific Palisades, California, another spot where no complaints here, right? Partly cloudy today, partly cloudy tomorrow. We've got temps holding in the mid and upper 60s. Plenty of sunshine headed our way on Sunday, so a very California forecast. Uh, we've also got some weather that's happening right now in making way for some weekend sports. How about Ron Stadium Series? The NHL, they bring the games outside. We've got temperatures cooling off tomorrow, okay? So tomorrow, game time is 8 o'clock. We've got the Caps coming in to play the Hurricanes. Temperatures will be in the upper 40s around 6 o'clock, but notice cooling into the low to mid 40s and even upper 30s throughout the game. So if you are there at Carter-Finley Stadium, it's going to be chilly, but... I would love to talk to the man, woman, the crew that have been doing the ice all week because <laughs> look what they've been up against. How do you even keep ice in that stadium? Temperatures earlier this week, mid-70s Wednesday. Uh, Mid-70s or upper 70s yesterday. Today, it's mild. We've got rain coming down, so they have uh, really had to show off their um, ice-protecting chops, Mike. But tomorrow, it'll be a little bit... Uh, a little bit more hockey-like, but still yeah. over-freezing. 
again, sends uh, the who gets rain, the who gets snow, right? Because early next week, we've got that disturbance that's bringing the western rain and snow. Our second disturbance, though, off the coast of Baja, California, those get moving east and again, bring us the setup for a, a similar storm system, northern tier snow with a lot of areas getting in on rain and storm. So we've got our polar jet stream, our subtropical jet stream, that moisture drawing up well to the north, up towards the Great Lakes region. And as those systems move east or those disturbances move east, they're going to take advantage of some of that very cold air. Across the west, man, it is going to be chilly. Meanwhile, other side of the country out ahead of these systems, warm air will be feeding northward. So well above average temperatures for some, well below average temperatures for other. Widespread snow across parts of the west into the uh, northern stretches of the Plains states and then parts of the Great Lakes. Again, looking at widespread snow with rain, thunderstorms likely across parts of the southern Midwest states all the way down through the Tennessee and Mississippi valleys. European model says a stretch of very heavy snow possible there into parts of Minnesota and eastern South Dakota. Meanwhile, you can see the cutoff pretty dramatic. A place like Chicago, Omaha, according to the European model, would be looking at light, if any, accumulations. The GFS model? Very similar right now, fo focusing in on those areas across South Dakota, Minnesota, and the state of Wisconsin, as well as the UP for some of the heaviest snow, then into Canada as well. So once again, as the Northeast miss out, looks like it. This is going to be a Midwest and Plain States event. But like the European, the GFS says Chicago, Omaha, very little, if anything, for you. And then as far as the rain is concerned, could be looking at some moderate rain across northern parts of the southeast into sections of Tennessee, similar but farther north footprint for the USGFS. That says the moderator heavy rain would be focused across parts of Arkansas, uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, into Virginia, as well as back towards the Dallas-Fort Worth metro. Mike? Alex, thank you. Coming up here. A good battle, right? That's why we loved American Gladiators. A battle of the seasons, though, across the U.S. Now in one corner, winter holding on to the northern tier. Meanwhile, spring says, nah, I got the south. Who wins or who's most dramatic, right? It's, is it the most dramatic season ever that we've had here across the country? Well, next week, look at all the warmth. Population with highs above 70, 80 million people Monday, 90 million people on Tuesday, nearly 100 million people will see high temperatures above 70 by the middle of next week. Meanwhile, across the other part of the country, it is going to be a whole different ball game. How about population with highs below 40 degrees, 23 million below 40 degrees on Monday. Monday on Tuesday, 37 million people below 40 degrees. And by Wednesday, 59 million people below 40 degrees. So again, we've got some uh, big clashes coming. And so, you know, if you've uh, got family on one side of the uh, country versus another, you can be like, hey, what do you have? Is mine better? Or if you hate what you got, you know where to go to get something different. Warm spring-like temperatures across the eastern U.S. So if you're a t-shirts and shorts kind of person, this is where you want to be early to mid next week. And, and that includes parts of the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states as things will really be warming up. Jackson's at 76, New Orleans 77. But look at Norfolk, Virginia, 63 degrees there. And... You're not alone. We're going to keep that high pressure. That'll strengthen, move east, and that'll keep our temperatures on the mild side. Meanwhile, low pressure digging to the south is going to draw in some colder air. So as that low pressure area rides that dome of warmth across the Pacific, it slingshots into the southwest, drawing down some more cold air. So a very amplified pattern is basically what we're trying to say. There are big ups and there are big downs into next week. So cold polar air for the western U.S. Meanwhile, that warm tropical air surging out of the south into the eastern U.S. So depending on where you are, you're going to be way different than average, just a matter of if it's the up or the down. 20 to 40 degrees below average late next week across sections of the central and northern uh, uh, northwestern U.S., Mike, 15 to 25 degrees above average across the south. I feel like we need to get, like, jerseys. Pretty strange, right? Is vital when it comes to the safety of skiers and snowboarders, and that includes... The four-legged members. Search and rescue dogs can really be the difference between life and death for someone buried in an avalanche. Paul Goodlow recently visited Vail Mountain in Colorado to get a look firsthand at their training. So cute, I want to go to Dogtown. It takes about two years for a dog to be fully trained, and when they're not out searching, they act as goodwill ambassadors and educators. 
state of emergency mm -hmm. across the state as a result of that flooding. Welcome back in, everyone. You're watching Weather on the Ground. I'm Mike Bettis. I'm Alex Wilson. It is Friday. You know, the weather calming down, but for a lot of folks, it's cooling off as well in a pretty big way. Big, big yeah. time. I mean, dramatically, right? So many of us had a really warm week, right? Yeah. A lot of temperatures in the 70s across yeah. south, almost 80 degrees. I was trying to places. temper it, but yeah, you open the front door and you know it's big time yeah. colder. Now, New London, Connecticut hasn't quite gotten to you yet. So, you All right, let's take a peek at what's happening here on the radar. Again, a lot of the heaviest and steadiest rain has has moved off the coastal areas. We take a peek at New York City. You've got the low clouds overhead. We do have some rain showers still moving through the New York City metro area. So at least light rain falling there with temperatures around 58. It's 53 in Washington, D.C. with rain showers coming down for you. And it's 59, still near 60 degrees in Boston, Massachusetts. Meanwhile, up to the north, Bangor, Maine, you've got freezing rain. It's 20 with snow in Burlington. Low to mid 20s for Cleveland and Buffalo with light snow showers falling in both of those areas. So the winter weather really Really limited to northern parts of New York and New England, although we've seen some of that snow sneaking into the upstate of New York. Uh, south of Albany, you can see we've got a little bit of light snow activity and some light snow showers falling across western parts of PA and into western New York State. Winter weather advisories, though, those are limited to the northern parts of New York and New England, so northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, northern Maine. Any winter storm warnings? way up there. Places like Caribou and Holton, those are the only areas under the winter storm warnings. And those areas could pick up another one to three inches. But keep in mind, we've also got the freezing rain out there. So even though it looks like very little accumulation of snow, yeah, that's the case. But some of these areas, it's not about the snow. It's about the freezing rain that continues to fall. Now, our big cities, you're getting in on that cool or even mild rain. You know, it's, it's 50s, so it's a little cool, but not as bad as we've seen. We've seen plenty of days with rain in the 30s and low 40s. So today, very manageable rain. Now that front moves through. Temperatures will be dropping off by later tonight. We're in the, or I shouldn't say later tonight, later this evening. We'll be back into the 30s for a place like Boston. So you're heading out to happy hour. Temperatures are going to be a lot different than the heading home temperatures. By tomorrow or by this evening, any of that precip is wrapped up for most areas, save for northern Maine and then the Appalachians. We've got a little bit of snow, that upslope snow that will continue for those areas. Boston, I mentioned your temperatures at 4, 5 o'clock going out, all right, mid-50s to upper 40s. But you head home after 8, temperatures in the 30s, Mike. <laughs> Isn't it right? I Great information. I know a lot of us are going to be looking at the trees around our home. Let's get you the forecast a day ahead. A Saturday, right? That's the day that we really care about. We're going to be looking at temperatures in the 40s for a place like Denver, Dallas, 55. Cooler across the Northeast, especially compared to where we've been. 42 tomorrow for Boston. Reno at 50. Any chance of precip really limited to the Pacific Northwest where we've got snow for some rain in Seattle. Well, wrecks on a narrow route are among the heart-stopping new stories on a new episode of Highway Through Hell. You can see it Sunday right here on the Weather Channel. Here's a sneak peek. Give that one to the professionals, right? Well, next week we've got our next system, truly a coast-to-coast -coast storm, and with a very different temperature profile across the west versus the east, what you'll see is very different from coast-to-coast. -coast. Here's the European forecast model. We get you into Tuesday, you can see snow overspreading parts of the west, with then rain showers working across the east. So we go back in time, show it to you again. Oh, this model's going a little crazy. But again, rain and storms off towards the Midwest and south, and then we've got the snow on the northern fringes. So some areas are going to be getting in on some wintry weather, other areas getting in on the stormy weather. Really similar to la last week's storm with it being parts of the plains, northern plains. So the Dakotas, Minnesota, UP of Michigan, Wisconsin, you guys could be the big winners when it comes to snow. Farther to the south, it's warm, it's mild, uh, or rather it's moist, and we've got thunderstorms again on tap. So there's that moisture drawing up to the north by the middle part of next week and with warm air in place could be a stormy setup once again farther to the north where we've got the cold that moisture widespread snow not just possible but in some areas I think likely the European and GFS model pretty much in line with some of these areas including parts of South Dakota and Minneapolis uh, Minnesota including the Minneapolis area you can see very heavy snow according to the European model GFS model says I second that very heavy uh, even really what is what is greater than very heavy when you get the light pink? So it's like very heavy and then like very, very heavy snow across sections of Minnesota and into the state of South Dakota up through the UP of Michigan. Then in terms of rainfall, could be looking at some moderate to heavy rain across sections of the Mid-South, according to the European. GFS says, think moderate rain likely a little farther to the west, but we've got time to nail this down. Something to watch, Mike. 